Hello, friends. Welcome to Level Up with Debbie Neal. I am your host. There is nowhere I would rather be than right here, right now with you. This podcast is all about leveling up in all aspects of our lives. Thank you for being here. I am so grateful. I'm excited to be on this journey with you. Together, we are leveling up. You ready? This episode of Level Up is brought to you by Transistor.fm. You want to start your own podcast? We use Transistor.fm to publish each episode of Level Up, and they help us distribute it to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It can seem complicated to launch a podcast, but Transistor makes it super easy to get set up and start posting. They also give us stats on our most popular episodes. I love tracking the analytics and seeing which episodes you guys are loving the most so I can create better content for you. So if you have a podcast idea and want to get started, you can use Transistor as your host account and you can get 15% off your first year when you sign up at transistor.fm slash level up, T-R-A-N-S-I-S-T-O-R dot F-M slash level up. Again, that's transistor.fm slash level up for 15% off your first year. Hello, my Level Up family. I, as always, I'm so excited to be here with all of you guys. Last week, we spoke about 10 characteristics. We talked about world-class thinking versus middle-class thinking. And as we grow in this Level Up journey that we're on, our goal is to become a world-class thinker. So if you have not listened to that episode, I want you to go back. I really want you to go back. I want you to listen to it. I want you to learn from it. I want you to evaluate where you are. And I want you to visualize where you're going. Because I remember when I heard those things for the very first time, I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, here I was thinking I was world-class. And there was quite a few things in my thinking that were middle-class thinking. And remember, our mind has so much to do in our thoughts with our success. So today, we this is what we're going to be talking about. We are going to be talking about how and why to develop yourself into the leader that you would want to follow, right? Because you want to follow a leader. You want to follow somebody who knows where they're going. You want to know somebody who's paving the way. So let's go over these, these points. Number one, be a lifer. Okay. So I don't know what you do for a living. I know what I do for a living. And I can tell you this from my experience from the, now, this is why we say everybody's journey is different from the very moment that I started my business. There was no back door. Okay. And that's why we say don't compare because to some people, it takes them five years to get to the point of no back door, right? Don't give yourself a back door. No time limits, right? Have you ever heard people say, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to give it six months. I'm going to give it a year. I'm going to give it a try. Like, imagine saying that when you're giving birth, right? You're holding that baby in your, you know what? I'm going to give this three months and see if I'm cut out for it. I'm going to tell you this. I remember when I was a mom for the first time and I literally held my baby girl who's now 23 years old and I thought I was ready. Like I read mom books and then I remember changing her diaper. I lifted up her legs and she pooped in my face. Like, uh, uh, and then the nurse just, she left her with me. She left her with me and she left, right? But I knew that that quitting wasn't an option. Okay. So to some of you might be like, that sounds like an insensitive comparison. Don't always take me literally, but you're getting my point. Whatever it is that you're looking to level up your life, there is no time limit. There is no back door. You need to make quitting an option. Would you follow somebody who's giving it three months? Imagine this, like in your mind, you're thinking nobody knows this, okay? And you're saying, I'm going to give it three months. Let me talk to people and see if they want to join my business. Your energy is like, I'm here for the results. I'm here if it's three months. You join me. You're not going to join me. I'm going to quit. And you know what? When I started my business, business, there were so many people that said no to me. And there were so many people that joined later in life. And what if I would have given them a time limit? I not only would have given up on my dreams, but I would have given up on their dreams. Know in your heart that you're going all the way, no matter how long it takes, right? This is, you want to become 
the person you want to follow. Would you want to follow somebody who wasn't all in? No. Okay. Number two, follow the system. Whatever company you're with, right? Follow the system. Be coachable. Don't reinvent the wheel. Honestly, when we don't follow a proven system of success, right? Most of the time, you want to know why? We're looking for a shortcut. There's something we want to avoid, so we search for a different way. Like, is there something about the business that you're building that makes you feel uncomfortable? Maybe it's calling up people. Maybe it's sharing from your heart. Maybe it's being vulnerable, right? You can't avoid those things. You need to grow into those things. And so what do we do? People say, you know, I know if it's in the business I'm in, I'm not going to reach out to my friends. I'm not going to reach out to my family. I'm that's, that's you trying to avoid the inevitable. And, and that comes back to belief. See, I believe in what I do. I believe that it has value. And I believe like, I, I want to share it with people. Whether you want it, whether you don't, that's okay. But I'm in love with who I am, where I'm going, what I'm creating. And I believe I have a gift in my heart. Okay. So when we, when we dance around the system, there's something we want to avoid. So we're searching for a different way. We avoid the very thing that will grow us and expand us. There isn't a shortcut to the top of anything. No, no, there's not. But here's, here's the thing. There, the only shortcut is your time frame. Your gap, your gap from starting a business, starting a job, starting with whatever it is, and then achieving what you want to achieve. That's your gap. It's what are you doing in that gap? If you're going to do less, it's going to take more time. If you're going to wonder, if you're going to doubt, if you're going to try to cheat the system, if you're going to try to run around the very things that you need to lean into, it's going to take more time. Okay. If you're going to like be all in and then be wandering and tiptoeing through the tulips, it's going to take more time. Do more and chances are you're going to grow to wherever you're growing sooner. Follow successful people. Do what they've done. Okay. Don't pull back if you don't like what you see. And and I've probably spoken about this on a past episode, but I call this the skinny mirror analogy. See, sometimes when we don't like what we see, we don't want to see it. We avoid it, right? So like avoiding the very thing, avoiding the system. So a little, a little side note here. When I was in college, my, they talk about freshman 15. I honestly think it looks like I ate my roommate. It was like freshman 25. Okay. And I had this mirror at school that I got at like Bed Bath and Beyond, one of those mirrors that you lean up against the wall. And it made me look about 15 pounds lighter than I really was. You ever have one of those mirrors? Like, and, and sometimes dressing rooms do the opposite. You go in, I'm like, why do they even have this mirror? Like, I look whiter, like paler. I look bigger. Like, this is awful. I want to try my stuff on at home. Okay. So anyway, I had this mirror at school that made me look 15 pounds less. I knew that it made me look better than I looked in reality. Okay. But I didn't want, I stopped looking in the regular mirror. I stopped avoiding the very thing that would actually make me see what I had created. And what I had created was not healthy. It wasn't me living my best life. It was me eating Chinese food at one o'clock in the morning. It was me partying a little bit too much in college, okay? And so my point was, the minute I stopped looking in that mirror, I was the longer I looked in that mirror, I was avoiding seeing what I needed to do to change my current reality. Okay. So follow the system, look in the mirror, look in the correct mirror, look in the mirror. That's going to force you to lean in level up and do the things necessary to become the leader that you would want to follow. Right. Okay. Number three, create activity, whatever it is you do. It's all about activity, right? It's about generating new business, generating new leads, initiate activity. That's what leaders do. They initiate activity, be hungry, like hungry, like, like you're training to be a gold medal athlete. Like you're there, you're developing yourself into the person people want to follow. Do you want to follow somebody who's like moseying along and they're not going after new leads, new business, new contacts, new relationships, be a pace setter. Like be the one on your team that your team is like, ah, I want to level up. 
I want to run faster. Look at them. He's impressive. She's impressive. And you're not doing it to out shine people. You're doing it to like the way for people, show them the way, like be the bar. You know, you want, you want to follow a winner. Don't you, you want to follow a winner. Winners create activity. Leaders create activity. They set the tone. They set the pace. They don't wait for anybody else to initiate activity. They create it because they know they have 100% responsibility for the activity they create and they are developing themselves into the leader that others would want to follow. Number four, set goals. Always have a goal. We talk about this probably in almost episode that we do because you can't level up without a goal. You you just can't. Goals are your compass. Your vision is your fuel. What's your goal? Because if you don't have one, I got to be honest, you guys, I love you. I always say I love you. We've created an awesome family, but I'm not following you if you don't have a goal. I wouldn't get on your bus if you didn't know a destination. I wouldn't get in your car if you don't know where we're going. And I'm certainly not going to join your business and your mission and your vision if you don't have one. Your vision is your fuel. What's your goal? Do you have a goal? Does it keep you up? Does it keep you pushing? A goal is the difference. Okay, here's the thing. You're either a driver or a passenger in your success. Drivers have goals. Passengers are like, oh, I don't know where we're going. Let's see if my team in the back seat or my team that I'm allowed my team to drive me. I'm like driving Miss freaking Daisy, okay? Because I'm not even in the driver's seat of my own success. And if they drive, yay, I'm here for the ride. I'm here for it, right? Are you a, are you a driver or a passenger? And that lets you know if you have a goal or you don't, okay? Are you driving the bus or is your bus like a sightseeing bus or is it on the move? Is it on the move and it has high vibe music and energy and cheering? Number five, show up all the time. All the time, success is not convenient. I might not be popular for saying this, but the world has gotten a bit soft when it comes for success. Since when do things get handed to us on a silver platter? What makes anybody think that success is going to fall in our lap? If you're committed to leveling up and showing up is even an option for you, then you need to reevaluate your words. When we show up, we level up. No matter what you're building, what you do duplicates. If anybody in your business, in your family has to say to you, so are you going to this? Are you going to be on this? I just want to let you know, that's not them being curious. It's them giving you feedback. They're letting you know that you don't always show up. So they want to know if you're going to be on this one. If meetings are optional, your team and your future team will see them as optional as well. And so let's talk about Zoom meetings for a second, okay? Because a lot of businesses are doing Zoom meetings in today's current world. And thank goodness for them. I am very grateful for them, especially today. It's helped me connect with my friends, with my family, with team members, with people in other countries. But oh my word, to some degree, Zooms versus driving, going, being in person, looking professional, putting on a business outfit... They're inviting laziness, but see, they might be inviting laziness, but, but we're allowing it, right? What about driving for hours to build something worthwhile? And then people will get on a zoom with, with their cameras off. Like, I mean, think about this. Okay. If it's a business meeting, why do we even make it an option to have a camera off? If you were going to a business meeting, would you roll into that meeting with a bag over your head and sit in the room? Because that's what it looks like when your camera's off. When we're having a Zoom today, okay, it's a way to have a face-to-face, a a belly-to-belly. Business is about building connection and relationships, right? And so some people might say, you know, my camera's off, but I was in the middle of cooking. Again, you're here to level up. Would you go to a professional business meeting with your damn spaghetti and meatballs and be making it while somebody else is giving a meeting, right? So like really think about that. Would you want to follow somebody that joined a business Zoom with a camera off? Because I wouldn't. I wouldn't. And again, what's the topic of this? I'm not here to judge. 
You could get on with a, with your camera off. You could be laying in bed. You could, I don't care. Okay. I care about you, but, but I don't care. You need to care. Okay. But we're here to level up. And the topic of this podcast is to how and why to develop yourself into the leader that people want to follow. Leadership is influence. Influence is leadership. I personally would not follow a leader in any sort of a business that didn't fully show up. Number six, whatever it is you do, do the do all of the time. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're building, do it every day with intention. Don't rest on your past success, right? Don't hang out with others that don't have success so you can feel better. Do more. If you're willing to outwork everyone, no matter what you do, you're going to grow your business. It's that simple. Whether it's reach outs, follow-ups, I own a business, I'm an entrepreneur, and you want to know how my business became successful? Now, there's a lot of of reasons, right? But I treated it like a job. I treated it like a job. I treat it like I was scheduled, like I had a boss. That's how you grow a business. Show up like you work for someone because you know what? You do. You work for you. You work for you. So you're the CEO. You're the boss, right? Even if you work for somebody, okay? Show up like you're the boss and have that discipline. Number seven, stretch yourself all of the time. All of the time. That's what leveling up is. Compete with your best self. It helps you stay relevant, get uncomfortable, raise your bar all the time, growth mindset, world-class thinking, stretch yourself. That's how you become the person people want to follow. Remember, if you're in a business of bringing leaders into your business, okay, you're going to enroll people at your belief level, okay? And yes, believing in your company and yes, believing in whatever products you represent, but I'm talking about believing in you. And if your belief on a scale of one to 10, in, excuse me, if your level of belief in yourself on a scale of one to 10 is a five, you're going to bring in people with a belief level of three, okay? Who won't even be able to talk to anybody about business, about vision, about discipline, because their belief in themselves is so low. Now they can go from a three to a 10 and you can go from a five to a 10, but how do you do that? By stretching yourself all of the time, competing with your best self, every day waking up and saying, today I am committed to becoming the leader that people would want to follow because people don't owe you anything. They don't owe me anything, okay? But we owe the world something. We owe the world becoming our best self so people follow, okay? Number eight, never arrive. When we arrive in any level of success, there's only one place to go and that place is backward. We are the rocket, okay? When we're taking off, when we're leveling up, when we're growing, whether that be position or income or level, whatever it is, what gets that rocket ship up in the air? It's the flame. It's the fire. It's the energy. It's the big dreams, the big visions, the big conversations. That's what's getting your rocket ship up into orbit, okay? We don't arrive. You dock that rocket ship. And let me tell you something. Everybody that hopped on your ship, everybody that bought into your vision, everybody that wanted to follow you, you dock. They're floating in space. I love when people say, I don't know what happened. I took my life, my business, my success, my promotion to the next level. And then where did all these people go? You docked. You docked. They couldn't hold on to a rocket ship that wasn't going anywhere. Now they're floating in space. They're missing in action. Okay. Number nine be grateful for everything. Good things in your business, be grateful for them. Amazing people in your business, be grateful. If you have not so amazing people in your business, be grateful. Everything goes as planned, oh my gosh, be grateful. Everything does not go as planned, be grateful. You guys, be grateful because guess what? It's teaching us as a leader how to pivot. Everything is there to grow us. Everything is there to expand us. What we focus on, we get more of. There is always something to be grateful for, always, okay? Number 10, be positive all the time. I want to follow a leader that's positive. You want to follow a leader that's positive. This is the mindset and the heart set that we're working on and building. What we focus on grows. So we talk about positivity all the time. I love the secret. 
I Love the Power by Rhonda Byrne. Obviously, it's podcast. You and I are here together. It's finding the silver lining. It's protecting your energy. It's minding your thoughts. It's protecting your vision. It's completely separating yourself from negativity. And if that means separating yourself from people in your life, you know what? That's a decision that sometimes we need to make to develop ourselves and become the leader that we would want to follow. Number 11, be the light. Leaders, here's the thing. Leaders know the way. They go the way. They show the way all of the time. Never allow anything to dull your sparkle. Sparkle. Remember, it's never about what happens to us. It's about how we allow things to affect us. Our light shines from within. It's our passion. It's our power. It's our love, vision, and positivity creating a way for so many. And I take that very, very seriously. You can always find my light. Shine so bright that nothing can dim your light. That's the leader I'd want to follow. I want to follow a leader that's lighting the way, that illuminates the sky with light and abundance and positivity. Be brighter than the sun. It is being all of these things consistently. Leadership is influence. How are you influencing? Leadership is a transfer of belief. What level of belief are you transferring to the people around you? Number 12, be committed. People follow commitment. Would you follow someone who was missing in action, right? Would you want to be coached by that person? People follow commitment. Number 13, be the most valuable player. Now, I'm not saying be better, okay? This is not a comparison thing. It's be the most valuable player in your business, in your corporation, in your job. Be the boss. Be the owner, be the difference, do whatever it takes so you can have the life, the success, the abundance, and the income that you desire. Lead, show up, bring the energy, schedule things, take charge, take initiative. Number 14, be obsessed to raise your game, going above and beyond, achieving all you can, earning every bonus every award. If your company offers trips, earning them, know that you can believe that you can let that fire burn inside of you. Call on your greatness. Be willing to go the extra mile and have that winning mindset. That's the leader that I want to follow. This is about developing yourself into the leader that you would want to follow. Okay. Number 15, personal growth and development affirmations. You guys, I drop them every Wednesday. I love affirmations. So so if you're not familiar with mine, these full episodes drop Monday. Affirmations drop every Wednesday. They're about three minutes. I pick different topics. Hopefully I do it for you, but you listen to others in addition. I say something, you say something. You could do them yourself, but affirmations is us speaking life into ourself. Gratitude journal, reading, audiobooks, podcasts. And here's the thing, as often as you can, our goal is to grow on the inside so we can change our outer life. We will never grow beyond our level of personal development. And again, who do you want to follow? Do you want to follow somebody committed to personal growth and development or somebody who's watching Netflix? Okay. So here's what I want to leave you with. Our goal, right? We know is to level up. Our goal is to become our best self, to level up, to set goals. Now I want you to visualize this. Okay. You are ready to complete your highest goal in your company or your business. So you apply that to however it applies in your life, okay? You're about to close it out. And you might be very close to that. You might be really far from that today, currently today. But I want you to imagine that this month you are completing it and you are growing to the top level of your company, okay? And now you have a team of people also because nobody grows to the top of anything alone. I'm going to ask you a question. How would you want your ideal team to show up this month? How would you want your ideal team to show up every month, right? What would you want their level of urgency to be, their level of passion to be, their level of positivity, their level of creating new business, going for incentives, setting goals, effort, commitment? Like, what would you visualize that to be? And here's what I'm going to leave you with. Be that person. Be that leader. Be the biggest team player. Even if you don't have a team yet, it's the only way to attract it. In order to enroll and coach to excellence, we must be setting a standard 
for ourselves. It's all about becoming, okay? It's about becoming the leader, the person that you would want to follow. So I believe in all of you. I'm wishing you the most incredible week. Next week, we're going to be talking about winning in the dark. I love you all.